Hello, future Rossies and pre-med explorers. This is Milena Garcia, your host for Ross University Checking the Post, a pre-med podcast. This is our mini podcast featuring facts and information about our medical program, insights from current students, and tips from practicing physicians. Each week, this podcast will be broken down in small episodes, focusing on one aspect of our program, also having guests talk about their own experiences as students and as doctors. In this episode, we will hear more about our sister school, American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine, also known as AUC. AUC's mission is to train tomorrow's physicians whose service to their patients is enhanced by international learning experiences, a diverse learning community, and an emphasis on social accountability and engagement. My guest is Regional Associate Director Jamie the Trinidad. Welcome back, Future Rossies. Thanks for joining us again. This episode, we're going to be talking about our sister school, American University of the Caribbean, also known as AUC. With me here today is Regional Director Jamie de Trinidad. Jamie, let's take a moment to have you introduce yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Milena, for having me here. I have really enjoyed listening to your podcast, and I'm excited to be here as well, uh, representing AUC School of Medicine. Thank you. Um, And as Milena mentioned, I am the Regional Associate Director uh, for Student and University Partnerships out here in the Western half of the United States. And uh, really here to represent AUC, talk a little bit more about the program, um, maybe address some of the questions that students typically have. Mm -hmm. So let's start from the beginning. Tell us what is AUC? Well, AUC, uh, much like Ross actually, was founded over 40 years ago. And it also is a four-year MD program. it's, it, it's allopathic medicine. So it's a, not an osteopathic program, the MD allopathic medical route. And uh, essentially students are set up to practice in the United States once they graduate. So that's one of the mm-hmm. biggest questions I get is, you know, once I go to your program, will I be able to practice here in the States? And absolutely t- students are taking the same exact examinations, the, st- the USMLE step exams, they're going through the same US residency match process. And once they graduate, um, do all of the good things that they're going to do in residency and beyond, they are eligible for licensure, to apply for licensure in all 50 states. So it's a really great option um, when considering medical schools. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, like Ross, AUC offers the medical sciences in the Caribbean and then back in the U.S. for the clinical training. Let's talk about the the basic sciences. Uh, Tell us more about how the medical sciences uh, work out in St. Martin. Absolutely. So students will spend about the first two years at our campus Mm -hmm. in St. Martin. It's actually about 20 months because of the three semesters per year Mm -hmm. uh, system, but it's done at our campus there. Uh, Courses such as anatomy, immunology, biostatistics, pharmacology, all those fun things. Uh, Students will be participating in lectures and labs and they'll be able to utilize uh, support services like our peer tutoring program and academic skills center. And they will spend all five semesters in that basic sciences in what we call our intro to clinical medicine uh, courses. And that's where they're gonna gain that hands-on clinical experience, taking what they've learned from the classroom into a a Mm -hmm. hospital clinic setting. And they're Mm -hmm. gonna build solid patient interview skills and diagnostic skills so that they'll be prepared when they go out to rotations. Uh, One more Mm -hmm. thing I can say about basic sciences is that they will also take a review class in that final semester to study for the USMLE step one. So Mm -hmm. it's a really comprehensive um, education in the basic sciences. Now you briefly mentioned the the three semesters a year. What are the class starts? Absolutely. Uh, It's very similar to Ross actually. It's uh, January we have a cohort, May and September. Mm -hmm. So that rolling admissions, as you know, it Mm -hmm. really helps a student to be able to start when they want to, um, you know, maybe not have to wait a whole year and maybe start right after they graduate from their undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. And what is life like for the students in St. Martin? Oh my goodness, Milena, St. Martin (laughs) is one of my favorite places to visit in the world. It is so beautiful there. Um, it's a vibrant, it's a, a vibrant community. It's uh, fun. It's friendly. It's a really an ideal setting for learning medicine. And I say that because it's really easy to take a moment to unwind when you can walk five minutes from the campus to one of the most beautiful beaches on the island called Mullet Bay Beach. 
And in fact, there are about 35 uh, different beaches on the island and the island itself is only 37 square miles. So it's a really cool different paradise um, to be able to just kind of decompress while engaged in a very rigorous curriculum. Mm -hmm. And oh, I was gonna mention one more thing. Mm -hmm. The food is amazing. It's one of my favorite things about St. Martin. Um, they really get all different types of cuisines. There's about 110 different nationalities on the island. So it's amazing. And what's the main language there? Actually, mostly it's it's English. Um, it is a French and Dutch island, and we're on the mm -hmm. Dutch side, but it's English is pretty much a primary language. And in fact, the US dollar is used everywhere for the mm -hmm. most part. Mm -hmm. So students don't really have a lot of big transition when they live there. Um, it's obviously different because it's an island, but they do get a lot of the same comforts that they would get um, back here in the US or Canada. It sounds really lovely a uh, place to study medicine. I know uh, you and I often get asked, you know, how often do we get to visit? And definitely not as often as as we would like, <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. As it's snowing, it's snowing outside as we speak <laughs> where I am. So. Yeah. <laughs> and well, um, what kind of opportunities for community outreach programs are there in St. Martin? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question, Milena, because um, Community outreach is a big part of the AUC experience. Um, there is an entire department dedicated to community engagement. And Dr. Golden Jackson has been there for over nine years, building strong relationships with uh, the Ministry of Health in St. Martin and other nonprofit organizations that students get involved with. Uh, as an example, students can participate in Community Action Day, which is a designated day every semester and they'll go out into different parts of the island and uh, participate in projects that support the community. That could be anything from cleaning up a local hiking trail or beach to providing mobile medical assistance or just things like diabetes screening and awareness. Um, and the students really love it. We're, we're not just a uh, AUC campus, it's not just a school on an island. It's really part of the St. Martin population and community. And who are the professors teaching there? Who are the faculty? The faculty, yes, I love the faculty question because uh, in the time that I had uh, been with AUC or have been with AUC, uh, they are one of my favorite um, pieces of AUC to talk about. They really are the backbone of the institution and their passion to support students is, is incredible. It's, it's really inspiring. Um, they are all highly qualified they have at least, uh, most of them will have at least the MD or a PhD, if the, some of them have both. And one of my favorite things is that they, many of these faculty have come from US medical schools, uh, have an experience teaching mm -hmm. at US medical schools, or mm -hmm. maybe we're on uh, a board um, or other international medical schools, mm -hmm. but their focus is now 100% on teaching. So they're not drawn away from the students for, in terms of doing research uh, now they get to spend all that time teaching and that can be that can be a different experience that a student could get at a U.S. med school um, just because of the way that the research uh, it functions at many institutions. Mm -hmm. And after spending 20 months on the island of St. Martin, where did the students go for their clinical rotations? Yeah, clinical rotation. So yes, after they leave the paradise <laughs> for 20 months, it's hard for them to leave. Trust me, I, I see them after and they're like, what? Um, they will have the option then to take to do their clinical rotations back in the US. So, well, actually most of them are gonna do them back in the US. Mm -hmm. um, we have 17 US core sites uh, mm -hmm. to meet our student needs, uh, student body needs. And students can choose uh, if they'd like to stay in one hospital or maybe they wanna to go to different hospitals to get a more diverse experience. Some of our core sites include Kern Medical Center in Bakersfield, California. Mm -hmm. I know Ross uh, has clinical sites mm -hmm. there as That's well. Correct. And uh, also Mount Sinai in uh, Chicago, Illinois is a clinical site and uh, Flushing Hospital in New York, uh, Queens, New York is a hospital, just to name a few. So they're getting quality clinical experience, sometimes rotating with other US students and other international students. Um, and they will work with a clinical advisor um, once they go, once they leave the island, they're gonna work with that clinical advisor to really make sure that they're going where they want to go um, and finishing within those two years. 
Now, we're giving some really good information here for the prospective students that want to go into medical school and if they decide they want to apply to AUC, what are the admissions requirements? Yeah, absolutely. So the admissions requirements are pretty standard in terms of, you know, most medical schools, right? We do require a bachelor's degree, um, science prerequisites, uh, but they can vary. So ours are a full academic year of biology, chemistry, and organic chemistry with labs. Uh, but AUC only requires one semester or four units of physics with that lab. Mm -hmm. And um, so that can vary uh, for school. I always recommend students look into the school because they all could have different requirements. Mm -hmm. We also require an MCAT. So you do have to take the MCAT for admission. But much like Ross, AUC has a holistic review process. Mm -hmm. Um, that rolling admissions process allows us to do that, of course, and we consider all applicants um, and would look beyond the MCAT scores and the GPAs on paper. Uh, in specific, they'll look at the grade trending within the transcripts. Uh, we all know how hard it can be to increase a GPA, right? You're in your right. final year, you're getting all A's and your GPA moves like, like a smidge, <laughs> like what? And so that on paper is not really reflective of what you can accomplish mm -hmm. as a medical student. And so that's the kind of thing that the committee might look at that context. Um, your letter of recommendation, your resume and experience, mm -hmm. your personal statement is all very important to the mm -hmm. committee. Um, and interviews are also a key part of that decision-making process. Mm -hmm. And where are the interviews held? Yes, so we have been conducting the interviews virtually for quite a while, actually. Mm -hmm. It's been extremely convenient to the student. No need to travel anywhere. Um, so once they have that interview with us virtually, they'll typically have that decision within a couple of weeks time. Mm -hmm. Jamie, tell us what the secret is for AUC. What makes a good candidate? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, Milena, that every student finds medicine for their own reasons, right? Um, somebody's going to have, for AUC, somebody who has that passion for medicine, for serving their communities, um, showed capability of handling academic rigors, is going to be a strong uh, candidate for AUC School of Medicine. It is important to be accountable, right? You want to show how you've grown academically, be able to talk about it, even if on paper it doesn't look like that. Uh, it's also somebody who's adaptable will always do well in medical school, and especially, you know, coming out to St. Martin and the island um, for AUC. So really, there's no there's no rubric, there's no matrix of if you check these boxes, you're going to be perfect. But these are some of the qualities that the admissions committee at AUC uh, really admires. And um, I think a student like that would do really well in the program. Absolutely. And I'm going to second as the Ross representative on this call, don't self-select out it is about what you're bringing to the table, your adaptability, your flexibility, your hard work, the effort, how disciplined you were, right? The GPA Absolutely. and the MCAT alone don't represent everything that you're bringing to the table. So certainly come talk to one of us in uh, the admissions department for Ross or for AUC directly. We can certainly put you in touch with them so you can meet with an admissions coordinator and talk about your individual situation. Okay, don't self-select out. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Jamie, for all this important information. Yes. Now, um, how do the students finance their education? Oh my goodness, that's definitely one of the top questions, right? You're mm -hmm. an international school or you're, you're not in the US, so how would I pay my tuition and living expenses? Much like Ross, uh, AUC is eligible to participate in the federal direct loan program, but students can apply for federal financial aid through completing the FAFSA, and most students are used to filling out the FAFSA. Um, mm -hmm. Also, AUC does offer uh, automatic merit-based scholarships based on MCATs and GPAs. And we also have scholarships that you can apply for that speak to some of the uh, qualities that, that the committee rewards. So, for example, if you're a first-generation uh, MD or will be the first one in your family pursuing medicine, there is a scholarship application for that, um, and we really want to reward students for taking that step. Um, there's also ones that are based on community service. So there's definitely options to subsidize your tuition. Mm -hmm. 
Now, we've been spending some time talking about some of the similarities between the two schools, everything that you mentioned so far, plus we both have uh, similar USMLE pass rates, residency attainment rates. Uh, now, let's talk about some of the differences between Ross and AUC. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if I could, I would recommend students apply to both programs. And really, you know, you should be applying to more than one medical school in general. Um, but uh, there are personal preferences, right? There are some differences between the schools. Um, one thing I can kind of point out is that AUC tr traditionally has had smaller cohorts. So between, you know, January, May, September, uh, those cohorts could range uh, each between 100 to 250 students. So some students do prefer to have more of a smaller sort of tight-knit family feel. And that's just kind of the culture of, of AUC and I think do much to the smaller class sizes. Um, beyond that, in addition to the uh, virtual dissection sector tables, they do have the uh, cadaveric dissection mm -hmm. lab. So if you're someone who really wants to get your hands, you know, gets hands on a dissection experience, mm -hmm. you will get the opportunity to do that. They work in a small group of about three or four uh, per cadaver table. Um, and you can have that in your first semester as an option. Lastly, I would say the, the, um, the international students have a unique option. Uh, by international, I mean non-US citizens and non-permanent residents and US permanent residents. So a true international student, you can do the first two years of your program of uh, basic sciences at our partner campus of in Preston, England called University of Central Lancashire. Mm -hmm. So it's just an option for international students and uh, you would do the whole program the same way. It's just the first two years there. Jamie, thank you so much for joining me here and talk a little bit more about uh, what AUC is and what we have to offer. I really appreciate it. Our future doctors uh, and future Rossies listening here, here's another great opportunity for you research, look up. Yes, we're sister schools, but we do have two different application processes. So definitely we are encouraging you to do research both, apply to both. Absolutely. Thank you for joining me. I Thank appreciate you. it. And to everybody listening, we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Ross University Checking the Pulse, a pre-med podcast. This is Milena Garcia, your host, this podcast is made for you, so let me know what topics you want us to cover on future episodes. You can send me your comments, feedbacks, and requests to mgarcia at rossu.edu. Definitely follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel at Ross Med School or on Facebook. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, I am working my way to five stars, so remember to send me your comments and let me know your ideas. If you're on Spotify, remember to click on the follow button to get our future episodes. All right. See you future Rossies and pre-med explorers next week. Stop, 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 stop.